you know, I love God's word. It's, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides bone from marrow and spirit from soul. In other words, it shows us exactly the way we are to live this life and the difference between walking in the flesh and walking according to the spirit. That's why it's so important to have our word. Here we go. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 through 17. Again, this is Paul writing to the church of Ephesus. And he's writing to a church, giving instructions to the church. And this is, this is what he says. He says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, stand therefore. Look at your neighbor and say, keep on standing. Keep on standing. Yeah. Having your loins girt about with the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and, he continues listing, and as shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace in all circumstances in every circumstance take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God Jesus we love you Lord, you are amazing. We thank you that it's in you that we live and we move and we have our being. We thank you, God, that in you we can do all things because you strengthen us. Lord, we thank you that you are our front guard and our rear guard, that we're surrounded by you. <laughs> Lord, I pray for that revelation to take place in each and every one of our hearts this morning. Open us up to your word, I pray. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. Before you're seated, give five people a high five this morning. Tell them, say, I was born ready. I was born ready. What's up, CWC? How y'all doing this morning? Are you guys in the house today? Ten of you. <laughs> That's typical. Amen. One of these days, I'll get you all talking. Amen. Well, I know this. I'm excited to be here with you this morning, and I'm excited about the word that, that God has given for us today. I, I really am. And um, I think it's going to be really, really good. Are, are you guys ready for a good word? Amen. And so, look, we've been in this series. In the series that we are in, we are calling this. We're calling The Fight Is On. The fight is on. Remind your neighbors. Say, the fight is on. The fight is on. Basically saying this, making sure that first of all, we are aware that there is a fight taking place. Because let me tell you, this is what I know about the enemy. Okay, this is what I know about him. He loves to try to get people to believe, first of all, that he doesn't exist. That's his first plan. That's his first scheme is to get the, the world to believe that he doesn't even exist. And then if he can't do that, the next step is he wants to keep us all distracted from the reality that we are in a fight so that we're not ready for the fight. He, he wants to keep us distracted. Matter of fact, in ancient Rome, what they would call this was bread and circuses. That's what they called it, bread and circuses. Meaning this, that as long as they kept the people well-fed and well-entertained, the people wouldn't even realize that they were in a fight. They couldn't be ready for the fight because they didn't even know they were in a fight. And so they didn't realize that their, their rights were being taken, their freedoms were being taken. They, they didn't even realize. And so this is the way that the ancient Roman government rose to the perennial power that it was over, over their people, was by bread and circuses. They would keep their people well-fed and well-entertained, distracting the people from the real fight, distracting them so that they wouldn't even realize they were in a fight and so they wouldn't be ready for the fight. And this is what the enemy tries to do with us. He tries to do the exact same thing. He tries to keep us well-fed and well-entertained in order to distract us. And I can definitively say this, that we are probably the most well-fed generation of our time with the most convenience to get fed. Most of us don't have to grow our own food. Praise God. Amen. If I had to grow my own food, I would be very hungry. 
I don't have a green thumb, so I praise Jesus for I don't have to, to grow my own food. And most of us fall into this category of not having to farm our own, our own food. What's hilarious is that the time that we live in nowadays, we don't even have to go to the grocery store anymore to pick out our own food. Again, I'm not mad about it. I mean, now we can sit on our own couches, pick out our own food, watching our own favorite TV show online, right? And I love it. It's amazing. But we don't even have to do that any longer. So I can say that we are a well-fed generation. And I can definitively say that we are the most entertained generation in the planet, or at very least up to this point in the history of our planet, at very, very least. We are entertained from the moment that we wake up until the moment that we, we go to bed. Matter of fact, we don't even have to get out, get out of bed to be entertained. It, it's at our fingertips. It's literally just a push of a button away. That's why my kid can't even sit in a movie any longer because it's just not long enough to entertain him. He's got to switch through all the different videos because we're, we're extremely well entertained. Again, I'm not upset about this. I love being entertained. <laughs> I enjoy it very much. However, because this is the reality that we face, the enemy tries to use this against us. He tries to keep us well-fed and well-entertained in hopes to distract us from the fight that we are in, not knowing that this fight is on. And so the season that we're in right now, and, and it's not only us, by the way, it's hilarious. The moment we launched into this series, there's multiple churches all over the place launching into the same series. And it's not like we're talking to each other. It's just what God is doing right now making sure that his people realize the fight that they are in so that they're not caught off guard by the fight. And so he is telling us about this fight. And not only is he trying to tell us about the fight and highlight the fight, but he also wants to teach us how to fight because you know what? He wants you to be successful in the fight. So, so he wants to teach you how to fight so that, so that the enemy can't take your rights and the enemy can't take your freedoms. And so number one, make sure you're aware of the fight. But then also he wants to teach us how we fight. Because listen, what, what good would it be if we, knew how, if we knew we were in a fight but didn't know how to fight? And so that's what we're gonna talk about today is, is how, we, how we fight this, this fight. Because it wouldn't be any good to know you're in a fight if you didn't know how to fight. If that were the case, if that were the case, if you knew you were in a fight but didn't realize how to fight, you would probably look like those people that go to the gym. They know they need to get in shape, but when they get to the gym, they're not sure how to use the equipment in the gym in order to get the results they need. Some of you are looking at me like I'm crazy. So I tell you what, let, let me show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. Let me show you. Now, look, I know none of you look like that when you go to the gym. I understand that. that that's for the 1115 connection time, people, okay? <laughs> that's none of you. But look, if this is what we look like in a gym because we don't know how to use the equipment, this is the same way we'll look in a fight if we're not sure how to fight. And man, I don't know about you guys. I don't want to be stuck in the fight not knowing, knowing how to fight because this fight is, it's on. And it's a rivalry for the ages. And so we need to know how to fight this fight so that we can get the results that we, we need to get. I don't want to look like those people. Standing in the fight, supposed to be using a sword, but instead I'm doing squats. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to do that. I want to know how I'm to fight this battle. And so that's what we're going to talk about today with a message titled this, Invisibly Ready. Invisibly Ready. Tell your neighbors, I was born ready. Tell them I was, yeah, you got to say it with like a little bit of gangster in you. You know what I mean? Like just a little bit of swag. Like I was born ready, Jack. I was born ready. Because remember last week, you got to remember what we talked about last week too in reference to this. See, Paul says this, we don't fight against flesh and blood. 
but against rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces in the heavenly places. In other words, we fight against what we cannot see. We fight against what we cannot see. So, so we better know how to, to fight with weapons we cannot see. Matter of fact, Paul says this in 2 Corinthians. He says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage war according to the flesh. Because the weapons of our warfare, they, not, they are not of the flesh, but they are mighty to the destroying of strongholds. Amen. Even though we are walking every single day, fighting things that we can see every day, the battle lines aren't drawn there. Because this fight that we are fighting is against things we, we cannot see. It's against what we can't see. And so because this fight is against what we cannot see, we need weapons that we cannot see to keep us invisibly ready. These weapons that we, we can't see, guys, are, are weapons that God gives his people, that God gives us. And they are mighty to destroy every stronghold, every single one, <laughs> every addiction. <laughs> Come on. Every lie. Every disobedient thought that that worthless devil tries to levy against us and our families will be destroyed by the weapons that God gives us. Amen. That should get you excited because that means that we're going to be victorious in this fight. Yes. We're in a fight that we, we can't see. But the cool thing is that these weapons that destroy every stronghold, you know, you know the reason why it does? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. For the weapons of my warfare, they're, they're not carnal. They're not of the flesh. I can't see them, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. However, the fact remains that we can't see the one we're fighting most of the time. And so we need to stay invisibly ready. And this is what Paul outlines for us, matter of fact, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 through 17, how to stay invis invisibly ready telling us to put on the full armor of God. You can't see this armor. You can't see it. And he says you, you always have to, to be ready for this fight that you can't always see. And so you'll need an armor to, to protect you from the things unseen. Second Corinthians chapter four, Paul says it like this. He says, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Oh, meaning this, this fight that we are in has eternal implications. See, everything that we fight for every day, day in and day out, those things we fight for, you know what I'm saying? The, the house, the cars, the businesses, the brands that we're trying to grow, all of those things are temporary things. They are here one moment, but gone the next. They're, they're but a vapor. Now, am I saying that those things are all sinful and they're all wrong? No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is exactly what Paul says. These things are always temporary. You can't take them with you. Yeah. But this fight that we are in is, is eternal. And so we need an ar armor that we cannot see to protect us and our eternity. Yeah. I'm about ready to start freestyling right there for you. And Paul, he outlines this for us in, in Ephesians chapter six, showing us how to stay invisibly be ready. And there in, in Ephesians six, verse 13, he starts off giving us instructions, giving us instructions. And then in verse 14, he begins to list these different pieces of armor. He starts, which by the way, we're only gonna get through one piece of armor today. Look, I tried everything I could to cram it all into one service, which any of you who know me well know that's vintage me. Let's do as much as we can in the moment we're in. But there was literally no way I could get through any more today because God just gave me too much stuff on this first piece of armor. So, so look, next week, you're gonna have to come back, invite a friend, come back and hear what the Lord gives us for these other pieces of, of armor. But let's read real quick. You guys still with me? Yeah. Ephesians chapter six, verse 13 says this, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Again, giving us an instruction. Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having all to stand firm, stand therefore. Look at your neighbor, say, keep on standing. 
keep on standing. We got to encourage each other because not always or all the time is everything going to be going well. We need to encourage, man, keep on standing. I'm right here with you. I'm praying for you. You're you're not by yourself. You're not alone in this battle. I'm, I'm right here. So keep on standing. I'll hold you if I need to, but we're in this together. Doing all you can to stand, stand there for having your loins girt about with the belt of truth. Now, I love that phrase, having your loins girt about. Girt yourself up, girt your loins. This is the reason I love it so much is because of what it means. This is what it means. It means get ready and stay ready. That's what it means. Get ready for the fight and stay ready and stay on guard, stay dressed, for action. Never let your guard down. Get ready and stay ready because your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. Your rival, the devil, he's prowling around you like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So get ready and stay ready. Stay, stay dressed for action. That's what it, what it means. Because, because sin crouches at your door and it desires to have you. So scripture tells us. The devil, he's prowling around, sin, it's crouching right there, trying to get in at any moment. So he says, girt about your loins. Have your loins girt about. I love that. Get ready and stay ready. And you do this by putting on the belt of truth. Now, let me tell you what the Lord spoke to me about this belt of truth. This is what he said when I was studying. God said, you got three voices you can listen to. Three. How does the belt of truth go to the ears? Just follow with me. Tell your neighbor, he's going somewhere. He's going somewhere. So there's three voices. This is what he said. He said, there's three voices that you can choose to listen to. One, your own voice. Two, the enemy's voice. Or three, the voice of truth. So one, choose to listen to your own. Two, choose to listen to the enemy's voice. Or three, you can choose to listen to the voice of truth of truth. And here's the thing about the voice. Whichever voice you choose to listen to will determine which way the fight goes. It really will. See, see your own voice. Here's the thing about your own voice. Your own voice isn't always the right voice to listen to. I could probably go a whole lot harder than that. I could probably take it a step further and say, it's never the right voice to listen to, but I'll refrain from going that far and I'll stick with my original statement. It's, all, it's not always the right voice. And here's why, because your voice will tell you that it's, it's all about you. It's about what makes you feel good. It's about what makes you happy. And we hear this all the time. It's constantly beaten into our minds. Man, do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. Because it's all about you. The problem with that is this. See, the voice of truth says, he says this. Jesus says, I desire for you to serve her. I desire for you to serve him. I desire for you to serve, not be served because it isn't all about you. I'm not saying it's never about you, but it's not always, it's not always about you. Jesus says this. He says, I desire for you to be a light in this dark world. In other words, I desire for you to be a breath of fresh air, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. I I desire for you to follow me. I desire for you to love me. And I know who loves me by those who listen to me, who obey me. And when our voice isn't lining up with his voice, it's for sure the wrong voice. Then there's the enemy's voice. And this voice is constantly saying things to you like, you aren't worthy. You aren't worthy of his love. You haven't done enough good in your life to be loved. You've done way too many wrong things in your life for for God to love you. But see, the voice of truth says something completely different. It says something completely different than that. But this, this voice will constantly speak over you lie after lie. You know, it was funny. I was talking to someone the other day about this. I was talking to them about the, the voice of the enemy. And a question that I proposed to him was this. I said, Well, what if what the enemy is speaking to you is your reality? What if that happens? I think it's a very important question that that requires a very important answer. Because I know this for a fact that there's been times in my life that what the enemy was speaking was exactly how I was living. 
I think if we were honest with ourselves, we've all been through this. It's so true that the very thing the enemy was speaking is exactly how we are living our lives. What, what, do we, what do we do then? What do we do when the voice of the enemy is telling you you are an addict and that is the season that you're, that's the reality of your life. You're addicted to drugs or alcohol or pornography, whatever the addiction may be, you find yourself living in that day in and day out. So the voice is speaking your reality. What do, we, what, what do we do? What do we do when he's telling us that, that we do everything wrong? And, and that's the exact season we find ourselves in. We've been wrong as a parent. We've, we've screwed up our marriage. So we're not, we haven't done good being a husband or a wife. What if that's the reality of our life? And he's speaking exactly what we are are living. What if he comes to you and tells you, you, you have a sickness, you have a disease, and the reality is that's exactly where you're at in your life, and you've had it for a long time, and you've been dealing with it. So what he's speaking over you is exactly what you are in the midst of living in. What do we do when what the enemy is speaking is exactly how we're living? There's a story in Genesis chapter 37. The story is about a man named Joseph. Now, when Joseph was a young man, the voice of truth came to him in two dreams. And it told him this. It said, you will rule and reign over the people. I've got these great plans for you, Joseph. But but you see, you have to understand this. So, So Joseph is the youngest of 12 brothers. So in other words, he has 11 older brothers than him. And when he goes and shares this voice of truth with them, they become very angry. And so they decide they want to kill him over this dream. My goodness, good old fashioned sibling rivalry, amen. (laughs) You thought your kids didn't get along. My God, they decide they wanna wanna kill him over over this voice of truth, which by the way, a sidebar for you. Listen to me, whenever God speaks truth over your life, the enemy will always send something or someone to try and kill, steal, and destroy. He just will. so, So you need to have your loins girt about with the belt of truth, stay ready for it, And be ready for it because it's coming. This is exactly what's happening to Joseph. He receives this word of truth. And so the enemy sends people to steal, kill, and destroy. And it just so happens to be his brothers. But what's funny is one of the brothers talks all the other brothers out of killing him and talks him into talks them into throwing him into a pit. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it, right? Thanks, man. Thanks for having my back. Toss me in a deep pit. Then after they throw him into a pit, he's sold into slavery. And while he is a slave, he finds himself then locked up in the prison because of a false accusation. And so here he goes from the pit into slavery, and now he's in prison. So so I want you to think about this for a moment. The voice of truth comes to Joseph. He's 17 years old, by the way. God tells him these great things. You're gonna rule and you're, you're, gonna, reign. you're gonna reign. Immediately after he's tossed into a pit, sold into slavery, then ends up in prison, falsely accused. And what you have to understand is the enemy's tactics are the same then as they are now. His voice would have been ringing in his head, constantly telling Joseph things, constantly speaking these lies over his life. The whole time telling him, hey man, you are stuck in a pit and you deserve the pit. This is where you're going to remain. You're going to remain in this hole. And the reality of his life was exactly what the enemy was speaking. Then he sold into slavery. You're a slave. You can't rule anything. You are a slave. And and this dream that you had wasn't the voice of truth. It was your own voice speaking to you, telling you what you wanted to, to hear. You're a slave. You'll never, ever rule. How would that even be Be possible. What he is speaking is what Joseph is living. You're in prison. You're locked up. You're in shackles. You're in chains. And you deserve exactly what you're getting. Speaking his reality. It is his reality. So what do we do when our reality isn't lining up with the truth? What do we do when the enemy is saying exactly what what we are living? Well, Paul tells us. He says, have your loins good about with with truth. Know the voice of truth. See, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth. In other words, when he speaks, it's always truth. 
period. Everything in his word is true. Every single thing that he has spoken over you and me in his word is truth. It's complete truth. And the enemy cannot speak truth. It's not in him. John chapter eight, verse 44. This is what Jesus says. He says he was a murderer from the beginning because the truth is not in him. And when he lies, he speaks his native tongue because he is a liar and the father of all lies. That's all he can do is lie to you. That's it. And so when the enemy is speaking, he is lying. And, and so that means this, that if he is speaking our reality, then what we've done is, is we found ourselves living in a lie. Our reality is a lie. Not the thing God spoke, but our reality. We have found ourselves living in the lie that Satan is speaking. So when he's speaking these things over you, when he's trying to tell you, you aren't worthy. You got to know the voice of truth because the voice of truth says, for I so, I so love you. I'm so in love with you, specifically you that I gave my son to die for you. And this truth speaks to your worth. We've got to know the voice, the voice of truth. When the enemy tries to tell you that you are a mistake, the voice of truth says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, that I knew you before you were in your mother's womb, that I knitted you together when you were in your mother's womb. And whatever I create is never a mistake. When the enemy is telling you that you are an addict and that's the reality of your life, you find yourself smack dab in the midst of being addicted to drugs or alcohol or pornography. Whatever the addiction is, you have you have to girt your loins about with the belt of truth and know that the truth says this. He says, I came to set the captive free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. I came to seek and to save that which is lost. And that's the truth. Even if your reality says something different, <laughs> it's amazing. Church, when the enemy's voice is trying to tell you all these things, that you've done nothing good, that you've messed up being a parent, you haven't done good being a husband or a wife, the voice of truth says, before the world was formed, I created you to do good works. Amazing. But the enemy will try to tell you all these things. Try to tell you that you deserve the sickness that you have, the disease that you have. You deserve it and you've been battling it for years and years. But see, the voice of truth says something different. He says, by my stripes you are healed. That, that you walk in the divine healing that, that I've already purchased for you on your behalf on the cross at Calvary. This is the truth. Even though the reality says something different. The voice of the enemy will constantly say all these types of things over you in hopes to drown out the voice of truth. But, but let me let you in on a little secret. Let you know something. When you have your loins girt about with the belt of truth, his truth is always more powerful than your reality. It's just the way it is. His truth is always more powerful. You see, Joseph's reality was exactly what the enemy was speaking. Exactly what he was speaking. He was in a pit. <laughs> he was a slave. He, he was in prison. It was his reality. But see, then at the age of 30, because you got to remember, at the age of 17, God spoke the truth over him. So from 17 to 30, for 13 years, his reality didn't line up with the truth. Didn't line up with it. But see, because God's truth is more powerful than any of our realities that we are in, at the age of 30, God's truth became his truth. And Joseph went from the pit to prison straight into the palace. And for 80 years, he ruled and he reigned over God's people. Amazing. For 80 years, just like the voice of truth told him. I need you to get it this morning. God's truth is always more powerful than your reality. And I don't care where you are in your life right now. 
in my life there's been multiple times when the enemy has come to me and spoken my reality at one point in time in my life I was addicted to drugs and the enemy would come to me and say you're addicted to these things and you're a drug addict because your family tree is riddled with addicts alcoholics and drug addicts it's riddled for that and, and because of that the enemy would constantly remind me that I would follow in their footsteps that I would be a drug addict and I would die one because after all I came from a long line of drug addicts and people who were addicted and didn't live for Jesus that was the reality of my life and the enemy would constantly tell me that this line this family line of addicts would continue with me and it would go through me that my children's children would be the same exact way I was. They would all be addicted as well. And this was the reality that I was living in. I was, I was an addict. What the enemy was speaking was exactly what I was living. But, but see, Jesus spoke a different truth over me. Matter of fact, he speaks it over every one of us. It is a promise to his people. He says this, I have good plans for your life plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. See, God told me this when I was a young, young kid. He said, one day you'll, you'll pastor. I was like 11 years old. Immediately after that, my whole life spiraled out of control. Immediately after the voice of truth came and told me this great plans he had, that my family I would have would, would live for Jesus and that they would love Jesus. This truth that he had spoken over me, the enemy tried to come immediately and destroy it. And for the next several years, I found myself in a reality of living in an addictive lifestyle. And I remember those times. I remember the times when the enemy would speak exactly what I was living. I remember them. But let me tell you something. Those old realities have now become my brand new testimonies. Because, because God's truth is always more powerful than your reality. Jesus made my truth and my reality line up with his word. He made it happen. And because of that, I am a pastor. I'm spirit-filled, man of the most high God. Got a beautiful wife who loves Jesus and me. Come on, somebody. Trying to get brownie points for late. Amen. I've got two awesome kids. And you know what? My kids are pastor's kids. They're not addict's kids. They have nothing to do with that life. They don't even know what that life is because of what Jesus has done. Because Jesus calls my reality to line up with his truth. His truth is always more powerful than the reality we are living, guys. Go ahead and stand to your feet. You know, today I really felt like the Lord showed me why he gave me this word is because a lot of you are dealing with this exact thing. That how you are living right now, the reality you find yourself in is exactly what the enemy is speaking. It's exactly what, what it's speaking. And, and the Lord wants to tell you today to gird up your loins with the belt of truth. Get ready and stay ready because his truth will prove to be more powerful than your reality.